Locks and dams 52 and 53 are at the hub of America's inland waterway system. Located on the Ohio River between the confluences with the Mississippi River at Cairo, Illinois, and the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers near Paducah, Kentucky, they are the two highest tonnage locks and dams in the system. The original construction was completed in the 1920s, consisting of the dam and the 600-foot lock chamber. During the 1960s, a temporary 1,200-foot chamber was built at Lock 52, with a similar temporary chamber constructed at Lock 53 during the 1970s. The wicket dam consists of a navigable pass and a weir made up of movable timber wickets, which are raised and lowered by use of a steam-powered maneuver boat, also built in the 1920s. The three bear traps provide a limited means of regulating river flow by remote control. A fixed concrete weir completes the dam. Locks and dams 52 and 53 will be replaced by the Olmsted Locks and Dam project. In the meantime, many repairs will be needed to keep these antiquated locks operating reliably until the Olmsted project is ready. The temporary 1,200-foot chambers are constructed of sheet pile cells. Corrosion, wear and tear, and barge impacts have caused many of these cells to deteriorate and their fatigue condition now threatens the integrity of the lock chamber. Several cells have split open, losing fill material and closing the lock until emergency repairs were completed. Without preventive repairs, these failures will become more frequent and severe. The filling and emptying valves have also deteriorated and require additional repairs. In the original 600-foot chamber, crumbling concrete and corroded metal components are an ongoing problem which continually worsens. The wicket section of the dam at 52 consists of 487 timber wickets, each four feet wide, which are raised and lowered by a crew operating the steam-powered maneuver boat. This work is physically difficult and potentially dangerous and must be done in all kinds of weather. All wicket repairs must be made using a shutter box, which is placed on the dam to allow the removal and repair of two wickets at a time. Divers work behind this box, repairing the cast iron components that anchor the wicket frames to the dam sill and replacing worn and damaged wicket assemblies. Keeping up with wicket repairs is difficult. There's a large number of wickets and only a short period of favorable river conditions each year. Many wickets are severely deteriorated by the time they are replaced. The three bear trap weirs provide a limited means of regulating river flow without the need to raise and lower sections of the wicket dam. The bear traps can be operated remotely from the operations building by manipulating numerous filling and emptying valves located in the concrete piers. This causes the leaves to be raised and lowered using the head pressure across the dam. The last major repairs to the bear traps were performed in 2007. The biggest problem is corrosion of the downstream leaves, causing them to leak and be less able to rise when needed. Holes are formed by corrosion combined with the abrasion of sand and gravel that is carried across them by the river currents when they are in the lowered position. Failure to raise one or more bear traps could result in loss of the navigation pool. Locks and Dam 53 are nearly identical to 52, with the exception that its bear traps are no longer operable. In 2002, a section of concrete guide wall at 53 started to fall toward the lock approach due to failure of the foundation's timber pilings. It was temporarily stabilized, and a section had to be removed the following year. Locks and Dams 52 and 53 need ever higher levels of expensive maintenance and repair, which delays commercial barge traffic. Even more disruptive to this busiest stretch of the inland waterway are the unscheduled closures for emergency repairs. They can back up traffic for days. When the 1,200-foot chambers are closed for repairs, tows have to break their barge formations in two, lock through twice, and then reassemble their formations before proceeding. These river traffic jams result in lost time and money to the industry and have a negative impact on the national economy. For the past 75 years, locks and dams 52 and 53 have served this nation well. However, they are now a liability to the system.
The Olmstead Locks and Dam Replacement Project will ensure the viability of this commercial waterway so important to our nation's economic security.